Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is having a wonderful afternoon. Welcome to the Renewal Center, Renewal Live Artist Spotlight today. We are so excited about today's artist today that we're going to be featuring. And, you know, we are so excited because within the last couple of weeks, for the month of, uh, uh, I would say for the month of August, we took the opportunity to interview two primary artists in their fields and we're so excited you know artistry comes in many forms and i'm so glad today that we'll be talking about artistry you know artistry is a, is a creative skill or an ability and so we're so excited about today we want you to uh share this broadcast go get your friends like this broadcast share it with your friends we want to get as many viewers as we can today because we're excited about our guests and for those of you that like the streaming over there on youtube we are also streaming live on the it's patrick brown page so visit us over there too so take this moment if you can share it on your social media platforms we want to invite everyone in today we're going to give everyone a moment to come on in and we're so excited. Please tell your friends to come join us here at the Renewal Center. So without further delay, we want to talk a little bit more about what we're doing. You know, we started here uh, with artist appreciation last month. And so we're going to continue our appreciation because art is a part of the Renewal Center's uh, one of our four tenets which is prophetic thought, art, voice, and action. And so we're gonna to continue to move forward with interviewing those that are in the field of artistry, painters, sculptors, digital media designers, photographers, videographers, writers, musicians, florists, florist designers. I mean, it's just endless. We got wood carvers, spoken word artists, poetry, jewelry makers, tailors, I'm telling you, it's endless when we talk about artistry. So let's bring on our artist spotlight today. We're going to highlight uh, our interview uh, today. And her name is Nicole Pannell. She is our culinary artist, founder of Nickapan. So the Renewal Center welcomes you today, Nicole. We're so excited that you're joining us. Thank you. I'm so honored that you chose me to interview today. Yes, yes, we're, we're, really, we're really excited. The reason we're excited is because art is one of the foundations here at the Renewal Center. And we want to let everyone know that craftsmanship and workmanship is, is very important. It is a craft that is designed by God and that we want other people to know that we appreciate the art field. And so uh, I want to ask you, let's start off this interview today. What is your culinary arts journey? And tell us your story. Well, I started as a caterer actually by mistake. Um, I had made a dish or something because I have always cooked, um, but not professionally. I made a dish for a party. And a guest that was at the party, her niece was getting married and her caterer had fallen through for like two weeks. And she asked, could I possibly cater the event? Um, it was a wedding. At first I was like, absolutely not. I'm not gonna mess up anyone's wedding. But, you know, I decided to do it. She did have the trust in me. I, I catered a wedding. I believe that was 150 people. That was my first catering gig was a wedding for 150 people and it worked out. She was very pleased with it. Um, and I kind of caught the bug. I'm like, okay, I can do this. So it kind of just snowballed from there. And that's a great start. I'm telling you, what a good start to actually start a catering business right there in the middle of a, a wedding. And, you know, it takes a lot of uh, initiative to step up to something like that and to be able to share your craft with people. And receptions, we know that receptions, it takes a lot to not just uh, – a lot goes into it. You got to do the um, whole layout, the, the menu, all of those things. And so uh, culinary art is just not the just cooking. I'm sure you can expand on that about yeah. culinary arts. You know, right. um, when I think about it, uh, I'd like to ask, in what ways do you even consider what you do, uh, you know, in the culinary arts to be a form of artistic expression? Because we know that we, we're, you're creating art as you're designing your menu. Art to me, like art in general, it takes you to, to another place. Like it's very subjective. So you like what you like, you don't like what you don't like. 
Um, it's the same with food. That's what I, said. I don't get offended if someone does not like one of the dishes that I make or create because just like art, it's subjective. You see a painting you like, I love that. Why? I don't know. It just kind of talks to me. The same with, with food. So I create it. You know, it comes to me. I make it. And I want people to like it. Mm. If they don't, you know, it's fine. It's, it's art. You know? Yeah. You know, Nicole, I like it when you said this. You said, you know, I make it and I'm not concerned about what someone may think about what it tastes like or look like or whatever, because really it is art is a form of expression that comes from within. Uh, you know, when, when a painter paints or those, you know, I mean, it's from within, you're inspired and motivated by something. So we know that inspiration comes from within. So tell us, tell the audience what inspires you to be creative as it pertains to designing those entrees. Because I've seen your entrees and they are amazing. Oh, thank you. My inspiration, um, the root of it in cooking comes from my mother hands down. I remember, you know, probably two, three years old, my mother threw the most amazing dinner parties. She would just cook for days, not only the cooking aspect, but she would decorate like the house, the table. The state. Um, I remember like the lace curtains behind a table with blue dishes. And then she would just cook for days. And the feeling like when people came over for the dinner parties, you, there's just a feeling, you know what I mean, that people are pleased that she was able to do that with food to make people feel so good with the way that she cooked food and set a table. And that just kind of always stayed with me. So my mother is my inspiration for, for cooking, hands down. That is powerful. That is powerful. I'm th thank you for sharing that, you know, because a lot of us pick up a lot of things from our family, our parents, and what they do, and we're inspired, you know, by some of the things that they do, and we kind of pick them up and carry it on. But it's just really great to see that you've picked up a lot of your artistry, like you were talking about the tablescapes, because a lot of us, you know, I love the hostess. I, I love hosting. And so I like all everything laid out from the table, uh, what we put on the table, uh, the deck, the decorations, the napkins, even the plate settings, everything goes into culinary art. It's not, I know that's what you do. It's not mm -hmm. just a cooking aspect, but making, like you said, I'm picking up on what you were saying, making people feel good about uh, being there. It's something that draws people in. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, uh, when you're actually there and you're preparing for an event or you're preparing for a, a special dinner or or something like that for someone that you're servicing well excuse me what i do with food i think everybody has their own memories you know food will take you to a place like you smell a certain scent like i remember when i was such and such and we had that or you know a scent will take you back even like all the way back to childhood like the the hot dog you had at the park, you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, the scent from the beach, the ice cream cone you had at the beach. So when you cook for someone, every, like I said, everybody has their own tastes. And a lot of those tastes are made from memories. So if I can find out what it is that you like, mm -hmm. you know, if I can get into that, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm sorry, it's not coming yeah. out right. Yeah, I, I like to prepare foods for people that they're going to enjoy. Right. Um, and so if I can make you happy with the way that my food tastes, like that just makes me ecstatic, like that I can make somebody feel good just from going in the kitchen and cooking up a dish. That's yes, I like that. I like what you said. And, you know, we have a view of Shirlina saying presentation is everything. Most people yeah. eat with their eyes first. And then, you know, she said, LOL. But, you know, I was thinking about your uh, Instagram. Uh, it's like a, the mantra that you have. It says, eyes eat first. Eyes eat first. That is amazing because what you see is what draws you in when you're looking at a cuisine. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, when I go to a buffet, let's just say a buffet when you're going to a great event and they have a beautiful buffet, it, it, that has to be appealing to the senses. That's what you were saying. It's a feeling. You know, mm -hmm. it has to be some type of feeling that you get when you're looking at it, when you're with the smell. So what I'm getting from what you're saying is you're using all of your senses. 
when you oh. when you're creating your meals, when you're presenting it, those type of things. So, um, has there is there a particular cuisine that you like best? Oh, that I like best personally. <laughs> My favorite, cook, again, it stems from, you know, growing up okay. is down home, old school, you know, okay. family style dinner, Sunday dinner type of food. Like, I love to cook that because that really makes people happy. You can cook all of the, um, you know, the fancy dishes and everything and people love them and look at them. You know, they're really pretty, but, you know, nothing beats being able to go in the kitchen and make, let's just say, mother pork chops and mashed potatoes or fried chicken and macaroni and cheese like at least for a lot of people that I cook for like that will always take them to a place those are going to be the popular dishes that's going to go first you set out a buffet with all the fancy food and then the home style food that home style food is going to disappear out the door and again that comes back to mm. memory you know what you remember eating growing up what you remember having the smells you know, so yeah, that's that's actually my favorite thing to cook because it makes people so happy. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I like when you say that because it, it makes us feel like you know, like you said, the foundation of where we came from. A lot of us grew up with different specialty meals depending on what part of the country we came from. And you know, uh, I'm from the Low Country, so we have seafood and red rice and fish and all of these things. It's just you know, it triggers memories. I think that's really that's really. Um, important that you're creating a memory you're creating uh artistry is is creating something it's it's skillful work and uh, i i love to watch people who create you know i i would love to know and i i bet our viewers like to know describe a day in the life of a culinary artist because it's not just cooking and we're not just in the in the kitchen pulling out cookbooks and right. just cooking it's more to that can you tell there, us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. There's so much more. Um, there is not going to be just one, you know, road to take in a day of a culinary artist. What it starts with is an idea. Um, wow. And sometimes, you, sometimes it just comes to you and sometimes you see something, you know, you have inspiration. Mm -hmm. You see like the trend, the trending food, especially now with social media on Instagram. And TikTok, there's so many ideas out there. And while you don't want to, you know, copy an idea, you will get an inspiration from things, you know. So mm -hmm. I love to try out um, new dishes. So you'll get an idea. And from that idea, you know, you'll go in the kitchen. What I have, you'll have to go to the grocery store, you know, if you don't have it. Because most times if it's something new, you're going to have to go buy a few things. Um, my spice cabinet is ridiculously overstocked with things that I'll probably use once just to create a certain dish. But then once you get into the kitchen, well, for me, it's it's just a flow usually, um, especially if I'm creating something that I've never made before or something that I want to look a certain way. Um, because like all food, to be honest, it's not going to look so pretty. It might taste delicious, but it's not going to be, you know, the best looking thing. But when you do take that extra step to make it look pretty. Yeah. That's yeah. it. So you just kind of flow um, grocery shopping and then in the kitchen, the flow and then the presentation. That's, that's the day. Like for just one dish, you can spend a whole day creating like a, a cake, a cupcake. And I love, every, you know, I love every bit of it. Sounds like a lot of effort is going, you know, going into that, and it's like you want to make that masterpiece. Uh, exactly. you, you're, you're, you're aiming to make a masterpiece out of what you're creating. I mean, that's what I'm getting out of it because most of us, you know, of course, we want to make the down home meals or our favorite signature meal uh, or dish. Uh, okay, so we're getting in there, we put our love in it, and we serve it, and then that's it. But culinary art is going beyond just the basic of just cooking something. That's what I'm I'm getting, and I, and it's and it's so appealing. Your your um a lot of your dishes. Uh, for those of you that uh, are just 
tuning in. We are talking with Panel, uh, Nicole Pinnell. She's a culinary artist and founder of Nicopan. And we are so excited to have her on uh, Renewal Live Artist Spotlight. And so here is one of her uh, areas of specialty. Can you tell us a little bit about the picture that is on the screen? I can. What this is, it's it's a picnic basket. Um, it's beautiful. And someone gave me this basket. I love it. I love picnics. I don't really use the word picnic. I know the connotations, but you know, just for when I, I love picnics, I love eating outside. It's just something about it. So what I started doing was packing stuff in the basket, calling random friends, random family, meet me at such and such park and they'll get there. I'll decorate a picnic table, you know, and there's always gonna be that basket right there in the middle with something in it and usually food around it. And it started kind of taking off. Now, right now people have the luxury picnics that they're doing and they started requesting these picnics. I call them Nick Picks, which is kind of a play oh. on my name. So picnic, Nick Pick. Um, okay. Nick Pick. So that's what I call them. Um, they're actually taking off really well now. I have different types that I offer, but that basket right there, there's always gonna be some fruit. There's always gonna be some flowers. I love fruit and I love flowers. And it's just people come together, we sit outside, we eat, you know, under the sun, actually a couple times in the rain. And it just goes from there. Like it everybody just so enjoys it because it's something so simple. Yes. But we don't take the time to just enjoy ourselves a lot. So that's something where phones are off, we're sitting at the table eating outside. That's and amazing. That is so amazing. I and you know, and and now that you know, with the pandemic and everything, this is a great way of of, of, uh, of uh, I would say just communing with your family, fellowshipping outside. That is just amazing. Let's put that picture back up one more time. Oh, I, I, as I look at the picture, you've put a lot of effort into color scheme and just creating the theme. Um, you know, I see the beautiful flowers and the fruit and the plates and all of the, you know, all of the essentials. Uh, so for each person uh, or family or individual or business that wants you to come and let's say do the nitpicks, do they give you a particular type of um, what they are looking for or do you just create, uh, create it and just bring it? Is there something that they're looking for? I do ask people their preferences. What's your favorite okay. color? What do you like to eat? You know, are you allergic to anything? Are there any flowers you like or don't like? Um, but really, usually people will be like, I trust you, you know, just just surprise me. And and I do. I love where I love a theme. You know, you give me a theme, I'm gonna roll with it all the way. Um, so you know, say they like purple. I'm going to pull out some grapes. I'm going to have a purple tablecloth. I'm going to have some oh, yeah. violet from the table. I, you know, I you can see that. Lavender. Right. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I love cooking. But, um, like I said, usually yeah. they just want me to create. And I haven't had any, um, you know, anybody that didn't like it yet. So, well, I was, I'm just, I was inspired by that picture. So, I just definitely had to bring it you know, onto our Renewal Live today so people can see. We're gonna put up a, a, a series of pictures uh, and that I pulled off of um, Nicole's Instagram page for uh, Nick Nickapan. And these are her specialty meals. My goodness, these are amazing. Oh, describe the cuisine that we're looking at and, and you know, what type of uh, specialty, what is your specialty here if you could share with us? I don't have a personal specialty. I like to do it all. I will try anything, you know, international cuisine. I love ramen. I love um, pho, like different cuisines I love to make. These right here, I've been on a salad kick lately. These are actually meals that I've created for myself. <laughs> so wow, those um, are beautiful. Yeah, these were, these were my lunches in a week, other than the tacos in the top right corner. The other three were salads um, within a week that I had because I was craving salad. I do not like a boring salad. Um, you know, I'll eat it, but it the the prettier the better. You know, you add things to it that you can have. Um, I have had to change the way I eat lately um, mm -hmm. due to health reasons. Um, so 
I was like, if I have to eat salad, it's going to be a pretty salad. I'm not just going to have some lettuce and tomato on a plate. Top left corner, that's um, an Asian chicken salad. Um, I believe that shredded cabbage, um, mandarin oranges and sliced almonds with some roasted chicken. Let me see. Oh, I don't, and like, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm just looking at that. I'm seeing the chopsticks. You have all everything there that pulls you in to that picture. That is amazing. Okay, you can go ahead and finish. <laughs> now, that was one of my favorites. That was one of my favorite salads, actually. Uh, it was kind of inspired by the um, Asian chicken salad from Cheesecake Factory. So, that wow. was my inspiration for that one. Bottom left is my all time favorite Cobb salad, you know, uh, eggs. Um, blue cheese, you know, because I at this time I was eating keto, so mm -hmm. um, I okay. could have it, you know, it worked. I don't not doing that anymore, but that's what that's like a keto cop salad. Bottom left, salmon, um, absolute love it. I believe that was pesto and asparagus, so I made an asparagus pesto to go along with the um, asparagus on the salmon. So, yeah, that was my salad kick. I'm still on it. Um, then the top right, those are tacos. Um, Taco Tuesday is big with a few of my friends. So I created some tacos. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, the, um, the trendy taco right now is a brilla taco, which is, um, I believe it's a Mexican dish. It's like a Mexican stew and then you stew the beef and it takes like an all day process. Um, you know, I'm in the kitchen grinding peppers. I feel, feel like, like somebody's abuela grinding peppers and making the authentic Bria, taco, Bria stew. So you take the Bria meat and make the tacos. They're very popular right now. And wow. um, yeah, I decided to try it and they loved it. So, so, that, so that, the tacos, the Taco Tuesdays is, is one of your premieres. I, I'm assuming that's something that you make all the time. All the, all the time. And I do like every Tuesday, I'm like, I'm not just gonna make a standard taco. We're not just gonna have some ground beef in a shell. Um, let me see. The other one beside that, I believe, was a fried chicken taco with a ranch. Yeah, a ranch drizzle on top. So I like to well, create. I'm telling you, we're, our viewers are really making some some great remarks. I mean, oh. the salad, all of your entrees are just beautiful. They look, uh, Hope Melton is saying it looks amazing. It's delectable. We got uh, Trey Banks says, love the Bria. Uh, and Audrey Francis, go Nicole. I mean, it's just everybody is just straight banks and saying love the Bria tacos. You know, I, as I look at your uh, your dishes, they're so creative, and it makes me ask you this one question. So, describe to us. I mean, as we're looking at these beautiful meals that you're creating, what is most unique about uh, uh, to you about art? Uh, do you have a favorite type of art that inspires you when you cook? Because each one of these dishes has some uh, form of art artistry about them. I, I've always loved art. I thought as a child that I would have been some type of artist, but I was leaning more mm -hmm. towards, you know, painting. Um, that didn't work because I'm miserable at it. I can't paint, I can't draw. Um, but I love to look, I'll just go to museums and just, just stare at art, but then also, nature like to me god is like the best artist ever if you look at some of the color palettes that he put out there like god's color scheme is crazy i'm looking outside right now at the green like the trees and then the blue of the sky mm. like god is the most amazing artist and then when you look at fruit like i know on my instagram page there's just pictures of fruit and vegetables i can look at fruit vegetables and flowers all day so I'm sorry to get back to the question. Um, just like an artist has a, a palette, you know, they have their little palette with the little colors on it and everything. When I'm cooking, I can kind of consider like my spice cabinet, that's my palette. So, you know, you're in there creating, you know, artists start with red and green and mix red and blue. Oh, there's yellow. You know, you never know what might go together until you try it. So maybe you don't mix you know, cumin with cinnamon, but let, let's try and see what happens. Now that one did not work, but um, you know, it, it is art in the sense that you're actually creating something. You can take things that are already there, mix it with something completely different, combine it 
and it'll blow your mind sometimes at the combinations that you would never try. Mm -hmm. you know, two different, like the softy sweet combination. Yeah. Is the best ever. So. And, you know, as you were saying that about the palate and you were talking about uh, how you're taking different spices and adding them and using them and creating something original, I, my mind went directly to, like you were saying, like painting, which inspired you, which is kind of like an analogy because you, you, you get different. Uh, I'm not a painter. I mean, I love painting. But as you can see, you, you mix different colors and different. I mean, and it just creates something totally different. When you are mixing, you're doing trial and error. You're creating new things and original pieces just by adding new things. And I, I'm telling you, we got the viewers here saying, uh, talking about experimenting. Oh. And that's what it sounds like to me. You're experimenting with different things to see what the palate, how the palate would receive it. And probably even the way it's, uh, it smells, uh, the aroma from different spices that you use. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. Like, um, I was thinking about it, like you asked how cooking was a form of art, you know, we look at paintings and that's like a visual art, you know, and then music to me is, is auditory art. Like you can't yeah. tell me some of these songs that you hear, the music is not art. Like it's crazy. So you can hear it, but food, it can encompass like all five, all of the senses. So you're looking at it, you're, you're seeing it, you're smelling it, of course, and that if it smells good, it's usually going to taste pretty good. You know, um, you taste it, of course, um, you know, you're going to pick it up, you're going to feel it, some textures. And then like when you're actually cooking, the sounds, like the sound of like fried chicken or the sounds of like popcorn pop. So oh, wow. as an oh, art, you know, yeah. does encompass all five sentences all five senses. So it's, I don't know, I get so excited when I talk about it, but um, yeah, it, it's definitely, it's art. A lot it of people don't art. like it, but it is. Well, you know, I, I guess I wasn't, uh, wasn't really thinking about that, but that's what kind of draws us into cooking shows or things like that. When we mm -hmm. see, or commercials, you see something frying and the popping sounds and it's a form of artistry, the way things look with the colors. Uh, I know for me now, you know, I like to cook and I'll get, I'll make sure I get those red bell peppers and the green bell peppers and all the different colors and yellow. And, you know, I mean, I like them. It's appealing just looking at it. And so you're right. You know, we're, we're appealing to the senses. We're appealing to what we see. And I love that. Um, you know, Trey Banks is saying the sound of cooking is my love language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trey. <laughs> This is amazing, and I love this discussion. You know, uh, I know our viewers are, are really enjoying this discussion because it really, it really opens our eyes to see, like we said earlier, that artistry in general is create and a creative skill and an ability. So, culinary art is not just cooking, getting your mitts and your bowl and spoon or whatever, and just that's it. You throw a little something together, pop it in the oven, and take it out. But uh, you're doing so much more. You know, I want to go back to the very beginning when we were talking about you were telling us your story okay. and how you were elaborating about when you are cooking and you're preparing your artistry, how it makes people feel, how they, you know, how people are receiving it. You know, here at the Renewal Center, it's all about reforming culture, which is why we, we talk about art because it's a part of um, our, our, the expression. So as you are sharing your art with others, you know, your creative art of, of the meals that you, and the entrees that you create, um, it, it, I know it has to impact them in some way. Have you gotten any testimonies from anyone about, you know, wow, you know, your meal did this or made us feel this way? Yes. Uh, I believe it was last month there was a, well, one of my nitpicks led into um, someone else throwing another one. So someone attended one of my nitpicks and wanted to have one. It turned into something way bigger than I thought it was going to. Um, it was a friend's reunion, um, 42 years of friendship. Um, I believe about 50 people. Wow. And okay. So 
they were, I was asking them, you know, what do you want to eat? What type of foods do you want? Well, they wanted it more like, you know, like picnic style food. But when it came to desserts, I'm like, well, well, what do you want? Now, these were people, some of them I knew. I'm like, well, when you were younger, what kind of desserts that we have, did you have? So they told me, so I gave them a choice of five different desserts, you know, that were relevant to the times. I believe it was banana pudding, sweet potato pie, pound cake, chocolate cake, and um, apple cobbler. So like, just choose two or three of those, you know, your choices and they couldn't choose. So I was like, let's just do all, we'll do all five desserts. We'll do a little sample of all five desserts. Wow. <laughs> well, the, the food was good. You know, they ate the food. They liked it. I got compliments on the food, but these desserts, the biggest compliment I think that I've ever gotten in my life came from a, a gentleman. He came up to me and he had the apple cobbler and he said, Nicole, this apple cobbler takes me back to a time when my mom would make me apple cobbler. This wow. is like my mom's apple cobbler. I knew his mom. Mm. And I, I would never compare my cobbler to hers, but the, the thought that I could take some apples and some cinnamon and vanilla and remind this man of his mom who's passed now. Mm. Um, and when he said it, 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 he was so sincere. He's actually, he doesn't live in the city that I live in, but he said, when I'm back in town, I need you to, I'm going to order an apple cobbler for you. And that to me was the biggest compliment that something that I cooked reminded him of something his mom cooked for him when he was young. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. To answer your question, it yeah. happened. It makes me feel amazing when it does. <laughs> yeah, and, and because really uh, your form of art is bringing comfort to people, you know, like you were saying, you know, it was a remembrance of his mom and, you know, what she what she brought to him, the beautiful cooking and the same that you would be able to create these experiences for those. You are positively influencing others, impacting others through your form of artistry through the meals that you create, the dinner, the, the tablescapes, the environment, the picture that you're painting uh, is creating, you know, that uh, aura that we need, you know, and you just never know. You know, the, just creating that memory for that gentleman made a, a huge difference in him that he wants even more, you know, he wants more and he'd be able to tell others of the experience that he had just because you took the time to pour love into that and to create that. And so I'm, ex I'm really excited about that. And I want to ask you something for those of you. Uh, let me let me let me let me stop really quick. For those of you, please take a look on the screen and go visit uh, Nicole Pinnell's Instagram page at Nikki Pan, Nika Pan 7. Go out there, like her page, follow her. She has a, a catalog of all of her delectable dishes out there. They, I couldn't stop looking at them. It's just uh, amazing. Uh, different types of dishes that you create, and I'm, I'm excited. So um, I, I do have a question that I would love to ask you and just elaborate a little bit more on it. Um, what words of advice uh, would you give someone that, uh, I would say, how can you empower someone who feels like they feel a little apprehensive about stepping outside of their comfort zone to pursue your profession? or to even pursue their goal? Do you have some type of uh, form of empowerment that you can give someone for this field or for um, this season in their life? Right. <laughs> what I can say is if cooking, now I can, I can come to you from that aspect. If cooking is something that you wanna do, don't be intimidated because like I said, cooking mm -hmm. like art is subjective. What you want to cook, just, just try it. You know, if it doesn't work out, then you know, I need to change something. I need to add a little bit of this or take away a little bit of that. You know, it's not going to happen the first time. Trial and error is great. Failing at something like in cooking is good because then you know that there's something you need to change. You know, so it, if it doesn't taste good, I need to do this. If it tastes good, then I can do this and make it better. You know, so if you want to get into not just the culinary arts, any type of art or anything that you want to do. Right. Step out of your comfort zone. There's nothing to do it but just to jump. That there's no 
Nothing else I can tell you. You, you just got to jump. That's good. Yes. And you know what? That when you said jump, just taking a jump, that's like a step of faith to pursue something that you really want to do. You never know until you step out and take a leap of faith. And that's right. even to maybe switch into a career in the culinary arts, or it could be anything. Like you said, stepping outside of your comfort zone, out of your scope. Uh, that's that's a very inspirational and positive thing that you can share with someone. And, and that is amazing because there are a lot of people that might be in the middle or in a juncture and they're like, you know, I want to try something different, uh, whatever it is. And we'd love to have a word of encouragement that can help us sharpen us to move forward in a, in a, in a powerful way. So um, I'm thankful that you're sharing with us about the different skills. How, now, how have you evolved as a culinary artist? I mean, I know it started out at a wedding reception, but over time now, you know, with you doing your consulting and you're making all these different dishes, tell us how you evolve. What do you do to expand Nickapans? To expand Nickapans. I'm going to go back a little. Now, before I did that wedding, I have to say, I've always like from, like I said, from my mom knee, I've been cooking. I have a humongous family. There's seven of us. She, my mom and dad had seven okay. girls. Seven girls, you know, <laughs> so my family's huge. My mom and dad both came from a big family. So I always cooked and I've always known how to cook big meals. Thanksgiving was at our house. So, you know, it's nothing, well, it was nothing for me to go cook for 50 people, um, 100 people even. Uh, big pot meals are one of my specialties. Um, so when I started catering, that's basically what I did. I was doing weddings, birthday parties, uh, graduation parties, um, church dinners. Those are the things that I started out doing. Um, then I got into meal prepping. Meal prepping got popular. So I would go, you know, I would meal prep for people. I would go to their house, you know, mm. when I cook today, I go cook their dinner two or three times a week. So I went from, you know, big parties, which I still do, well, did, to meal prepping, which is very popular right now, because a lot of people are changing the way that they're eating. So, okay. Yeah. When you, when so, you say they're changing the way that they're eating, you mean, um, is that the cuisine in and of itself, or that's just more healthy eating? There's a lot right now people that are eating more healthy or there's the, the gluten intolerances that people are realizing that they have now. Um, there's keto, there's low carb, um, there's paleo. Okay. So um, I've done my research on those dishes. So if there's something like my thing, I'm a diabetic. When I go to some dinners, there's some things I can't eat. If I go to a party, you know, they'll have all the carbs and all the sweets and I'm sitting there like, there's nothing for me. So what I have started doing, which I guess is an evolution. Um, so people choose their menus for their party. I can't tell you what to have. So when I cook for you what you want, I always ask, is there someone that's alert to something? Is there an intolerance? Is there anybody that's keto? And I'll try to have something available for them also. You know, so... There's, there's modifications to be made because I want everybody to enjoy themselves, you know? So that's that's one way that the way that I cook has changed. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's actually getting very popular right now, especially like I'll have to go with like the low carb um, keto bandwagon that a lot of people are on right now. And I really do enjoy that style of cooking now because what it's taking, I like to take the meals that you're used to, that are that are delicious, um, but maybe not the healthiest, and see how I can, you know, recreate that taste in a way that's a lot healthier, or a way that you can have it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, me personally, I wanted some pasta. I wanted some salmon Alfredo. Somebody put in an order for salmon Alfredo. So I made their dinner and it's delicious. And I'm looking at like, well, what can I do? I went and got a spaghetti squash and some salmon. And spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. Okay. Perfect. Like if you want some some pasta, you know, put a good salsa over top of it. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna be honest, it's not gonna taste exactly like pasta, but you get that same 
taste. It looks so it like pasta. Like, it does. <laughs> It really does look like pasta. Doesn't taste quite like it, but it's it's delicious. So yeah, we're changing that. It's good. the way people are eating is changing. I'm noticing that, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going with it. So I like that. I like that a lot because that speaks to um, like something Sherlina Hux is saying. That's very thoughtful of you to consider those who eat differently. And you know what? Because things are shifting and changing, what you're doing is designing. And that's where the creativity comes again. You're designing uh, food and meal and you're bringing all of that and you're designing it, tailor making it just for someone and you're still get, keeping it uh, appetizing. You're still keeping the taste and the flavor there. And I think that's amazing. You know, everyone is just uh, on here. I, I can, would you agree? You know, this is really exceptional that you have to kind of shift where things are going and provide a need and a service. You know, Nicole, I am so thankful that you came to Renew Live on the Spotlight today. And everyone, I am so happy that we have a culinary artist here that is sharing information about her creativity because culinary art is a form of artistry that takes skill and it takes the ability and it takes, I would say, the, the drive to do it. And you want to bring some memory. You want to bring something to the table that's going to leave a lasting impression on someone. And so uh, I just want to let you know, those of you that are viewing, uh, that this is the Renewal Center. And if you would like to donate to the Renewal Center, uh, we're going to put that on the screen because uh, we would like to continue this content. We'd like to continue bringing this content to you. You can go ahead and uh, donate text to the Renewal Center right there. It's on the screen. Uh, you can do it by texting Renewal Center at 888-364-4483. That is 888-364-4483. If you would love to sew into the Renewal Center, we would love it. And you know, um, right before, um, I'm going to share a, bit, a little bit of an announcement and then I'm going to have Nicole come back and close us out. I just would like to share with everyone that I will be hosting the First Glance LLC Thrive Series. Uh, you know, I'm the founder and principal uh, owner of First Glance LLC, and I would love to bring my monthly masterclass to you. So I'm inviting you to uh, take a look at my masterclass, which will be every second Thursday. You will have an opportunity for one hour to uh, in be in an engaging environment with me, where we will talk about thriving in so many different areas, thriving in your goals. Thriving and creating a, a place to expand yourself and how to cultivate your vision. So you don't want to miss this masterclass. It's going to start next Thursday, uh, and it will be every second Thursday. And if you would like to register for this class, you can go to my website at www.transformational-moment.com and click the link about Thrive. Once again, www. Uh, dot transformational dash moment dot com uh, dash moment dot com. Go to the link that says Thrive Masterclass, and then next Saturday again, I have the opportunity now to invite ladies. You need to get your time right. Do you need some tips and strategies on how to maximize your time? There is still time to register for my class. My mini class is next Saturday, September 11th from 1230 to 330 on a Saturday. It's worth the investment. It's an engaging mini class. We're going to be talking about tips and strategies on how to utilize your time to maximize your life. In class, go to my website at www.transformational-moment.com forward slash classes or just click the classes link. Lady, get your time right. We'll be next Saturday from uh, 1230 to 330. Uh, I've extended the enrollment and registration time, which will be on next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when it will the enrollment will end. So go to my website today and check it out. There's a lot of information about both of these opportunities and these resourceful opportunities. So I look forward to seeing you. So Nicole, once again, I just want you to close us out. So exciting. And I want to say thank you on behalf of the Renewal Center leadership team. We want to say thank you for coming to us 
and bringing this information to our audience today. Nicole is one of our Tea Time Tuesday uh, Tea Timers. She's always on there, so we're excited. <laughs> so she's not a newbie to the Renewal Center. And so we are so excited for you, Nicole. We, we wish you well wishes as you pursue and continue with Nicopans. And once again, those of you go out and uh, take a look at her Instagram page, Nicopan7. Uh, go like her page, go check out all of her beautiful delectable dishes. They are a form of artistry, absolutely. So before we leave today, uh, Nicole, can you leave us some parting words? What's next uh, going for you and how can it get in contact with you? What's next for Nicole now? For Nickapans right now, I am focusing a lot on my Nick picks. They're growing really popular. Um, I have different themes that I'm trying out. I have the autumn Nick picks coming up for the fall. Um, so excited to do those tablescapes and the, the cooler weather food. Um, yeah, eat outside in the fall too. It's beautiful. One of my favorite seasons, actually my favorite season. So um Right now, focusing on the Nick Pick, still doing you know some personal catering here and there, um, and and that's pretty much where I'm going right now. I'm getting the Instagram page you know set up. It's new, um, developing a website soon, so that that's where I'm headed. Ooh, I'm so excited! And and Nicole, now the next time you come to the Renewal Center, we would like to have something of your creation so that we can taste it because I, I just cannot continue looking at all, all that beautiful <laughs> stuff and I can't taste it. But it is appealing to my senses. It's, oh. it's drawing me in. Yes, there's her. There's one of her nitpicks right there. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And uh, those are her. Watch Nicole Pinnell, culinary artist, founder and owner of Nickapans. We thank you for joining us here at the Renewal Center. We uh, uh, thank you everyone that has taken the opportunity to join us. Please share uh, this uh, broadcast with others to let them know that the Renewal Center is reforming culture. And we're doing that through appreciating art. And that's one of our four tenants here at the Renewal Center. So. Thank you for joining us. Everyone have a phenomenal Friday. We thank you for all that uh, you're doing to tune in here at the Renewal Center. Have a wonderful Friday. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you.